Hi, it's Charlie Denner of the MathWorks. So um, let's go ahead and run our model. All right. And this is where we stand right now. Yes, yeah, so we've got those ground contacts, and we see the little bounce associated with that. We also have the power spinning, but really nothing's happening, right? And, and so this video is really about putting in, I, I'd say actually starting the process. It's going to really be two videos to do this. Uh, to, to put in the lift, all right? And the, ultimately, we're going to put the lift in so it's related to the speed of the propellers. And so I want to just kind of show you what that is for right now. All right, so let's uh, go right here. I'm going to type in BUS. Let me get a bus selector. And I'm going to put that in here, and I'll double-click on this. And so for each of those motors, we're actually gathering quite a bit of information. and we're going to tap into this bus to pull out the speed. All right, and I'll put a scope in to receive that measurement. Okay. And so we'll hit run. And we'll observe that we're seeing about, let's see, about 1,100 radians per second. And I'm going to put in a gain type in 60 divided by 2 divided by pi all right and so that's if i did my math correct that will convert radians per second into rpm let's just pop that in right there Okay, we'll hit run. Bring that scope back up. And so we're operating at, let me make sure, yeah, about 10,000 RPM. Okay, but again, no lift. All right, and so, so anyways, this is really going to be like a two-part process. And so what we need to do is kind of structurally define the mechanical model so that it can receive that force and receive it at the appropriate location. And then we're going to kind of identify a useful relationship between propeller speed and the lift that we're going to get from that. And we'll do that in the next video. So with regard to structure and geometry, um, that's done much better on the SimWise side. But with regard to formulaic relationships between things like propeller speed and lift, that'll be done much better on the simulate side. So anyways, let's go to SimWise and let's fix this. All right. And so here's our model. Um, and we want to put lift kind of located where, where the motors are. And so I'm going to take each of the motor cases. Oops. And I'm going to hide everything else. All right, and that'll give me a nice view at the top of those. And that's where I'm going to say the location of that force is. So again, it's one of those kind of, I'll call philosophical conversations you might have on where it may really be, but I think it'll be good enough for our purposes. And so I'm going to insert force. And this is not quite as clean. It's a little bit more awkward than what we've been doing to apply constraints and, and, and cords coordinate systems in the previous videos, but uh, my understanding is the SimWise guys are going to update it soon, and this will be a little bit cleaner in the upcoming release, All right? And, and so we structurally have that now. Um, let's make it clear, a little applied force icon, All right? And they're all, the way I did it, notes are all being received within the sub-assemblies. They all have these generic names like Constraint 85, Constraint 76, and so forth. So I'm going to select each of them. All right. And we'll do an appropriate name for each. And I'm going to call it lift underscore drag because soon we're going to be applying essentially the aerodynamic load that essentially constrains, you know, it's the, 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 the torque of operating those things that's going to receive that pressure as well. That's not only generating lift, but is also uh, needs to be uh, acted upon 
by the, the power and the force of the motors that will drive the propellers. All right. and that'll be very important as we get into you know, fuel consumption and things like that. Now, the other thing I want to do, and you can kind of see it real clearly if I change the view like that, is I want to make sure these are all located at the center of that top surface. And so we're going to now operate on the coordinate frames that define that lift drag position. And with a local definition, we will put it at x equals 0, y equals 0. And I think you can see they're all now centered nicely on that top face. And with that, we're kind of done. All right. And so I'm going to go and save this. And uh, I believe it's an empty folder called Rev5. And we'll save it there. And we'll get into MATLAB in that same rev five. Yes, it is empty. Okay, good. All right, and with that, I'm gonna shut down quadcopter. We'll use get geometry to bring it in. So it now comes in looking a little bit different. And it, you know, it essentially has a lot more ports. And so we'll see that four new ports have been added for receiving a signal that will define that lift. All right. And I'm going to open up the model a little bit just to kind of show. And it's getting a little bit cluttered. Um, I think I'm OK with this. Um, and you know that we may talk in future videos a little bit about how what I'm going to do right now um, might be um, more easy. Basically, not have to do as much redo as I'm going to do right now. And the, the redo I'm going to do is really not a big deal. But uh, let's see: mechanical components, utilities, sim mechanics, 2G. Used to be called sim mechanics, not called sim mechanics anymore. But if you're familiar with that, they're pretty much the same thing. So, and this will look really ugly. So I'll definitely clean this up in between videos, right? And I'm going to just kind of, and in between videos, I'll kind of handle the uncluttering of the, the model. But just for continuity's sake, let's just do it this way for right now. And uh, with that, I'll hit run, and let's just kind of make sure we're doing things as we did before. Okay. All right, so those propellers are not spinning. Let's go ahead and put the spinning back in. Let's see. Trying to be efficient. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is like the best model in practice, but. Uh, but I kind of saved that. Uh, oh, see, I didn't even get the, the uh, dimensions right. So let's put that in right there. Grab on right there. Grab on right there. All right. So we got that uh, propeller torque is being defined by this. And notice I put the minus ones even so that the vehicle doesn't uh, need to rotate to account for uh, all the propellers moving in the same direction. So, so two of them are moving, uh, what's called positively, two of them are moving negatively. Therefore, their angular momentum will cancel each other, right? And so with that, we're kind of where we were before. But now we also have the ability to receive that thrust, right? And so with that, I'm going to make one more reference to what we have in SimWise, because SimWise is very convenient and doing a, a total mass calculation so to show all the bodies all right and so we go to the top level assembly and open up the assembly dialog you'll see the whole vehicle weighs just shy of 20,000 kilograms now that's way heavier than this ever will be in a real implementation and i'll just say that at this point we're not really concerned about the defaults and 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 
we by our default choice on material it happened to be steel and that's that's pretty heavy it's like almost 8,000 kilograms per meter cube right so let's see with that let's set up the thrust so that we get just enough thrust to overcome gravity pop that in like that and we'll put in 20,000 kilograms times 9.8 divided by 4 because we're going to apply this at all four of the propeller locations. Right. So we just branch off that signal and send it into each of those. All right, and with that, oh, we got an error. Keep on making this error in practice. And the way I want to kind of show kind of this very explicitly. And so what we have here is ultimately a scalar. And the force in general is a three component vector. And I've left it in that kind of description. Even though our vehicle is kind of set up so force can only be applied in the z direction. And this is a local assignment, again, according to that coordinate position that we set up. All right. And so by making that a three component vector, I think now we will get the, the lift properly. I'm going to stay on the model. Yeah, and so it already ran even. All right, and there it goes. So let's just kind of bring it back so you can kind of see that. Now, what's really going on right now, and this is why we need to do our next video, is that we have our, let's do this. So let's drag in the propeller measurement. We have our propeller spinning and we do have the vehicle lifting, but ultimately this is um, clearly an animation that is not getting all the right physical pieces into it yet, right? And so anyways, uh, what we'll do in the next video is we'll, you know, kind of take that propeller speed and we'll kind of, well, actually, the, the, this, this will be what it'll, it'll kind of look like. How are we doing on time? Uh, let's just kind of save that for the next video. And so we'll set up that relationship between propeller speed and lift, and uh, it should be a really good video. So anyways, thank you.